Quark's Vida Swasta Healthcare Course Principles and Motivations by Dr. Quark Sil Ming. Ayurveda and Swasta. Ayurveda, the Vedic science of life for all living beings, recognizes health and well being in terms of Swasta. Swasta means abiding in one's own self. Swasta involves living in harmony not only with the external world of nature, but also in harmony with one's own inner nature. Supporting the body, energy, senses and mind with the self within, Swasta embraces total physical, physiological and spiritual well-being. Dr. Kwok Sil Ming is an internationally renowned doctor of Buddhism dedicated to passing on universal knowledge to the next generation and for the benefit of all mankind. From humble beginnings, his mission has spanned Asia and the globe with official duties and notable works conducted in Mongolia, Sri Lanka, the former Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China. Dr. Kwok has held a lifelong pursuit in studying the health knowledge of the ancients and applying it within the modern world. One notable case in the early 90s saw him successfully helping the wife of a Soviet diplomat suffering insomnia by combining the strength of the wife's Christian belief along with his own sonic therapy. He has contributed translations to multiple internationally recognized Buddhist texts and is the author of Seeing the World Through Eyes of Wisdom. Dr. Kwok currently resides in Hong Kong. This is a special gathering. For a very special reason. Many people do not know my motivation. As I seldom say, but I have a motive behind this course. The real motivation is not as simple as you think. The human body has the ability to heal itself. But the ability was forgotten and is now being revealed again. This is just the basic motivation. I have not told you the real motives in the past. So I will reveal some of them at this gathering. This is a big topic. Even if you know, it is hard to do. But some fire must be left in the world. That is why I should tell you all. What exactly is the motivation for my course? I have been studying medicine for many years until I had the chance to treat a lady from the Soviet Union. The newspaper had published a story regarding this. I realized that some things in the world are not complicated at all. But it is that some people unnecessarily complicate things. There is no point in having a label of any kind. I once told the wife of a former Soviet diplomat to think of St. Mary. This is what helped her. There was no particular meaning to this. It was just a foothold. A way to stimulate her potential. It is not the focus of my work. It is just that I know the existence of such a thing. This kind of health class gives people this kind of knowledge. It is more a kind of hidden knowledge. So what is the key motivation? 
I have been to many places in the world, especially civilized places that are also prosperous places. Doctors in underdeveloped places are different. They are very sincere doctors. I can feel it. For example, in Burma, Vietnam, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, and Mongolia, the barefoot doctors in rural China are also sincere. The poorer the place, the more sincere the doctors are in treating people, no matter how good or mediocre they are. The patients in those places have very humble backgrounds. They cannot afford to pay much for their medicine. Some cannot afford to pay for their medicine at all. But the doctors in those places are really sincere. Now, the doctors I see in the prosperous world. I had the opportunity to hear what they said. Those doctors who had graduated from medical school. They each worked in large hospitals. They are considered to have a high status and well-paid career in society. They may buy a car to commute to work at first. Most of them will buy a Japanese car which is more fuel efficient and then rent an apartment to stay in. They are initially a trainee doctor with little experience and connections. After a few years of work, they have their own room for consultation. And they have changed cars to an Audi or BMW, but not yet a Mercedes. Then at that stage, what they say and what they do is different from the local doctors in the underdeveloped places. because they are in daily contact with different colleagues who drive cars that are better than their car and live in a much nicer house than they do. In particular, they see doctors who run clinics outside and due to the feeling of inferiority, automatically drop their heads because they are not well qualified and have no status. Doctors who run clinics are of course well paid. They often make social appearances to raise their status they continue to pursue their personal fame and fortune. This is what they do every day. So when they practice medicine, they do not think about what the ancients called the soul. Does being human mean having a soul? This is partly a matter of conscience. It is not that they do not have a conscience, but they are too busy to think about it. They regard the practice of medicine as a career. Not a vocation, but a profession. Not as a career with aspirations, but a job to earn a living. Beyond a tool to simply make a living, but not by much. After all, they have social recognition and personal status. They can move up the social ladder. However, in prosperous societies, the notion of medicine as a career has placed many countries into crisis. For example, the cost of healthcare in the United States 20 years ago the government spent $1.3 trillion a year. This is a huge amount of expenditure. Now Taiwan is also troubled by the healthcare system. I am talking about rich countries. The poorer countries are not as bad because their doctors and patients are not very rich. Doctors do not need cars. They ride bicycles or motorbikes to work. 
there is no need to compare with other doctors. I am not presenting this medicine to compare it with Western medicine. The purpose of this course is to seek out people who are interested in learning. Or those who have the desire to go to the next level. It is a struggle, but not a medical struggle. within the boundaries of worldly morality and human principles. This is a struggle with the desire for social power. It is a struggle that needs to be engaged in by people with real skills. To reveal that human diseases are not to be treated in the way that they are today. That a hospital visit is not just a consultation by a computer or where a doctor does not ask the patient about their condition at all or orders a round of tests but no treatment has been given for the patient then orders another round of tests at extra cost and still no treatment the doctor then looks at the test report and analyzes the data and has to run another test to reconfirm the data but after all these tests, the doctor has not actually treated the patient. So why would they do that? Because this is the system of medical diagnosis that has been developed in modern civilized society. That is why I have a small sense of mission. To challenge this authority. With effort, I hope to challenge and break this twisted structure. As you have all seen in the news recently, I have been promoting the use of tiger balm oil for 10 years. Only recently has it been introduced and pushed to the wider community. In particular, the pharmacies are now prominently selling to people both tiger balm oil and medicated oil. It took a lot of promotion to get to this point, so I hope you can understand. In today's society, between modern medicine and ancient medicine, there is an underlying struggle between the two. I hope that this struggle will not harm people. Doctors have no choice but to live in today's society. They are forced to do so by the system. Some doctors have clinics in Central in Hong Kong. The rent is about $100 a square foot. If you rent a space of 1,000 square feet, it costs $100,000. Not including the cost of hiring a secretary and a nurse. It is unlikely that the fees for a doctor's visit will be low. Therefore, the government of a prosperous society has created such a dilemma. Taiwan's Vice President Lai Ching Ti is a doctor. Taipei City Mayor Ko Wen Ji is also a doctor. But they cannot cope with the system either. They studied public administration. For a medical system that has the same pitfalls and drawbacks. It is a system that deprives patients of their money. It deprives patients of their minds and time. It also deprives the society of resources. The whole system is completely wrong. That is why you can share what I have said today with the public. This is a struggle. Today, I shared the words of a famous Chinese medicine practitioner who has passed. He spoke from the perspective of his own country's interests. China's population of over 1 billion cannot be treated in a Western way. He had his reasons for saying so. But from my point of view, it should not be so narrowly focused. 
China cannot be isolationist and focus only on itself. That is why we should look at things from a broader perspective, with the goal to recreate our ancient moral civilization through reforming the art of healing. I hope you all will understand my real motivation. It is to fight against the modern system. Not like governments fighting against epidemics and viruses. This is the wrong way to put it. Where is the virus? They do not even know how the virus works. So how can we fight it? So those government officials are just bragging. But the struggle we are waging through medicine. There are targets, but not doctors. The real target is the social system of those civilized nations within our modern world, which is currently controlled by a group of harmful people. Because of the insurance company's system, all medical expenses are paid by the insurance company. The government also buys insurance from insurance companies. Plus large organizations also take out insurance for their employees. Therefore, there is no pressure on the general public to pay for health care. Do few people seldom consider how best to cure others and the methods to do so? Or whether the current health care system is working? The system eats away at everyone, but many people do not know that. Premiums should not be too high, but our interests are being taken away all the time. So we should fight, but we need people to fight. I hope there are some talented people out there. I have provided a way to do it. It is very simple. Think of yourself as an animal, with the innate knowledge of how to heal yourself. It gives the patient the confidence that they can heal themselves, or you believe you can heal yourself. In fact, you do not need to believe. An embryo is formed by the union of a sperm and an egg. The whole body is created from this. The ability to create yourself. If there is a deviation, the body can draw on this same ability and repair itself again. Fingernails and hair grow automatically. Flesh grows automatically after cuts. Wounds heal on their own accord. The body is fully capable of repairing itself and has all the tools to fight this struggle. This concept is obscured by customary worldly behavior. This concept does not distinguish between East and West. Only that the Eastern world is more traditional in its use of this concept. It is used more often. Doctors in the Western world do not use it even if they know about it, because their interests are affected. I hope that you will understand. I also hope that more people practicing medicine will participate. After all, they have a medical foundation and some of them have a relatively low regard for fame and fortune. Or some of them work in government. They can use their modest influence to provide the right ideas within the government. No reform can be achieved in one step. Recently, the Chinese central government has sent Chinese medicines to Hong Kong. Everyone takes these medicines to heal themselves. Naturally, there will be an impact on Western medicine. But the central government is the only one who can do this. The Hong Kong government usually does not allow this. Before Chinese patent medicine can enter Hong Kong, it is very difficult to get approval as they have to go through a complicated testing process. But this time, the central government ordered it and it was approved. That is why I support the Communist Party. The efficiency of the Communist Party can be seen in this case. 
I support the Communist Party, not because of its out-of-touch policies and backward thinking. I support their ability to organize. They have a very strong call. If there are good methods and ideas and policies constructive to the Communist Party, if they are willing to do it, they can do it. This is a very important point. But providing the right approach and advice in a democratic country, it is not possible to do so. Because many people with vested interests are mixed in with the establishment. They will oppose the proposals that are put forward. It is not possible to pass those proposals. So we need to realize this. The Chinese government has this advantage. They are absolutely capable of doing it. Other countries are constrained by their political systems. Many good policies are difficult to implement. It is very difficult to get those proposals passed. A lot of legislators are bought and paid for. In the Chinese community, making a formal revolution in the field of medicine. The success of this revolution in China will have a worldwide impact. This is my main motivation. I have never said it in public before. I am taking this opportunity to say it today. I will not say much else. You can watch my other videos and revise. And work hard to learn on your own. I hope that there will be people who are capable. So that there are like-minded people. I have another group to work with. If someone graduates from an advanced course in the future, I want people who are willing to learn and have the real skills. Only then can you stand up and do something. Otherwise, it is just empty talk and a waste of time.